smile. So Riley, you're back again. I'm back again. Or Russia. Everyone calls you Russia on the street. They didn't understand that that Riley wasn't a Russian name. <laughs> I call you Riley, which is actually your last name, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I like. Okay, I, I remember I asked you what your name was or what do I call you? You said Riley, so that's what stuck. So what's going on? Uh, um, well, I've got a million stories. I, I know you they, they, they just, I'll, I'll forget them because I have PTSD, and then all of a sudden something will make me remember something. And um, you know, I can't put them in chronological order. I can't remember when they happened. I just know that they have. This one happened when I was young. Um, I can't remember where the where the hotel was at. Or, but anyway, I was um, I was working in a, a dance club, and um, I was living in a. In, one of those hotels where nobody talks, or, you know, everything's, nothing's seen, nothing's heard. <clears throat> and uh, next door to me was this, uh, this, this man and his uh, two children. One was, he said 17, uh, I doubt it. And the other one was six, and two girls, they were two girls. And um, he was one of these men that was like, had that slurpy uh, jerry curl with all the juicy, dripping, gold teeth in the mouth, and he was a pimp. Um, Cause he kept trying to get at me and I'd be like, you know, kind of a hostile guy. <clears throat> and then one day I was getting off the elevator and now you have to understand, I have, I have uh, molestation issues. I, it's, it's, I don't have, it, it's not my, I'm not able to just let things pass by when I see other children or kids and things happen to them. Um, so um, I got this elevator and I stepped off and I just, there was nobody in the lot, right? In the, in, in, at the exit of the elevator. Um, but then I heard it like crying and I turned around and um, back in the day they had those kind of trash cans, they were, they were kind of a dome and the top was like a little ashtray and, um, and I looked behind it and there's this little girl who's six years old, my neighbor, and um, she's crying and she has um, blood all in her, her um, she had this little short time and um, I said, what, what happened? And she, she says, no, no, no. And I said, hey, do you want me to go to your dad? No, 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 he'll be so mad because, because I, I made the, the trick mad. And my brain just snapped. Made the trick mad. You made the what? Trick mad. She made the trick mad. The trick? The, the trick. He had, he had pimped her out to somebody. And he had, had anal sex with her. And she was bleeding. And... <clears throat> this is a six-year-old? This is a six-year-old girl. And um, I said, do you want me to take... You can come to my room. Do you want me to call your mother? No, she'll just sell me back. So I took her to my room, and I was coming from, I had gone to this, my friend had a, a, a new tanning salon at Beverly Hills with high pressure beds, and I had gotten really crispy burp. And so I'd stopped by a store, and they had this sale on this, that I'd never seen before, uh, green rubbing alcohol. You know, and, and I would use it to put in my bath water to take the sting out of the sunburn. And um, I bought a case, it was like 39 cents a bottle. <laughs> you know, so I bought a box of it. And um, I took this little girl to my room and I, and I tried to clean up in the bathroom and you know, and <clears throat> I was trying to talk real calm to her because she was damaged good. She was, she, was, she was just, you know, six years old. I mean, how do you, I mean, I know, I know I was there before. So I just knew I couldn't let that man have her back. He came later on, he pounds on my door. A neighbor had seen me take her into my room and I had filled up a bucket with that rubbing alcohol. And when he pounded on that door, I knew he was going to come in there and take that little girl from me. So I threw that bucket of rubbing alcohol at him and I lit it. <clears throat> and he was wearing, I remember he was wearing a, a green Puma jogging suit when they first started coming out. And he ran down this hallway on fire. <laughs> and he was all these big, bright green flames. And his hair was plopping off his deck because he was on fire. And um, I pulled the little girl in the hallway and I said, he will never hurt you again. You see, he will never hurt you again. And I, I pulled it back in the, in the room and I shut the door. And I uh, called the office and I told them that there was a mess in the hallway um, because it was one of those hotels where nobody talks, nobody sees. Um, and so she had an auntie. And somehow I found how to get a hold of this auntie. And um, when I called, she, she, she was just ecstatic that I had called. And I said, she said as soon as she had the money, she would, um, she'd send it to me for the ticket to send her to send her back. And I said, don't worry about the ticket, I got the ticket. You just have to promise me that you will take care of her because she's broken. You know, you have to make sure that she, she knows that he'll never come and hurt her again. I don't even know what happened to that man. I don't really care. I've never heard of an ambulance. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care. 
you know, but um, I know that she's okay. Her auntie was so happy to get her back. She told me that her mother would never touch her. If, if her mother even tried, she, she, she said she would kill her. So the man was a relation to the girl? To, to the little girl? I mean, no, she, no, he wasn't. He was just, his, his mother, had, uh, back in the Midwest someplace, had uh, the, the, both of the girls. Were, were were sisters, and um, he took them both. He she gave him some money. Uh, he gave them some money, and she took the, the two little girls. Um, so the one, the older one, she liked being there, I guess, or something, or or just kind of like you know that syndrome where you're kidnapped and you you. So she stayed. Yeah, she stayed. She. And the, the auntie you were. The auntie I I, I had. Was it was in was it what city? Um, it was. She was in Detroit. And I sent her back to Detroit, and um, because I couldn't keep her, I, where was I? You know, what I'm I'm, I wasn't. I'm not capable of being a, a, a mother. I'm not. You know, there's certain people that are good at being mothers. You know, so I'm, you know and I, I just, um, you know, I tried, but I just it wasn't so good. Yeah, I knew right. that. I did what I was supposed to do. That was what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to save her. That's I was supposed right. to get her away from there, That's and right. then pass her on to somebody who would be good at, at raising a child. And, um, I don't know. A lot of people could do what you did. I, I, I can't think of any other way I could have done that. Yeah, I, 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 it just was like, that's just, that just seemed like, I didn't even think about it. That was what, what <laughs> rubbing alcohol good? was in my hand. Um, this, I'm just, this, yeah, I'm just, this man's not going to get this little girl. Whatever I have to do, this man's not going to get this little girl. If he's a, you know, he's probably wearing that same green jogging suit. They'll probably bury him in it. <laughs> if he's, you know, I'm not quite sure what happened to him. I don't care. But, um, yeah, yeah, it made me feel a lot better when I put her on the, put her on the, um, but she, she started crying. You know, I had to see her, I said, finally somebody helped her. <laughs> Just, and I know that feeling that used to think, why is it be happy? Oh, why is it okay? I'm crying. People, you know, people, that's a trigger of mine. I have a trigger where when I start to cry, if people are still doing something that's really bothering me, because that's a perpetrator. They know that it bothers you, whatever it is they're doing bothers you, annoys you. It, makes you feel uncomfortable, but they continue to do it for their own gratification. That's a perpetrator. Um, and there's low levels of that, and there's, you know, the extreme. And uh, I still, why do they keep doing that? I'm crying, you know. In okay. some ways, in some way did that uh, event heal some of the damage that... Yeah, it made me feel, it made me feel, yeah. Your own pain was kind of like healed by doing that. Okay. By helping this young girl. Absolutely. I, I can't think of anything. I couldn't have, have lived with myself if I hadn't done that. So uh, there was no, I wasn't an option not doing something. That wasn't an option. It just, I had to do that. Yeah. Whatever the case may be. That just seemed to be the only thing I could think of. Because it's, uh, this man, if I opened that door and had done something, that man would have taken that job oh, for me. Personally. No matter you know, what he had to do to me. Because we were just a piece of, you know, some kind of a property or, you know, a commodity. Hi. Thank you so much for yet another great story. <laughs> when I see another one, I'll come back. Yeah, you're welcome here anytime. <laughs> okay. Say bye. Say bye, spots. I'm an auntie. I always babysit people's dogs. <laughs> I make a good auntie. Beautiful dog.